welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you. Handbag designer, Severe Eras of Sevi Bags is with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both a national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Severe Eras. Welcome to Beyond Focus TV, Severe. How are Thank you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. Thank you. Well, it's not every day that we have a handbag designer on the program. So, so it's very nice to have someone who actually creates bags from scratch. All right, guys. So when you, by the end of the episode, you're going to see some of the lovely creations that you actually do all handmade, how they can get them. So, you know, the holidays are coming up. You might want to do some early thinking of, you know, <laughs> getting the grab bag for the gifts. So that would be a great option. But tell us a little bit about you and how this all got started. Well, um, I'm Haitian um, and my parents they all have sewing backgrounds. It was 2005 that I wanted to purchase a handbag, and honestly, I really didn't have the money to, so I went to my mom. I was like, can you give me money to buy this handbag? And she said, why is this handbag so special? And then I said, well, it's just handmade. And she said, okay, tell me more. Does it have a lining? I said, no. She said, you're gonna pay so much money for a bag that's not well made. And she said, you know what? I'll give you money, and you can go ahead and buy your own fabric, and you can make your own handbag. Really? Yeah. So I went ahead and I purchased some um, fabric and I started making handbags. It was around Christmas and her friends wanted to order. My friends got on the bandwagon and wanted to, to order some bags. So that's how it all started. Now, how did your mother know to, that you had that creative insight in you? Because that's not a common thing. Or they may joke about it. You know, go make your own bag. Yeah. Well, since we in Haiti, um, my parents really encouraged us to do sports and whatever that we really enjoyed. And I was really into crafting. Mm -hmm. I was into drawing, drawing Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and Bugs Bunny. I had a sheet of Bugs Bunny, so I used to draw it a lot. Mm -hmm. And when we came here at the age of 10, my mom bought me a mini sewing machine. So I started crafting little things, just sewing things together, nothing right. too major. So then... Um, a few years later, I started playing around with denim and changing denim jeans into skirts. That's why she really encouraged me. So it was not like a skill that she saw that I was doing on a grander scale, but it was just little crafting here and there that I was doing that she encouraged me to. Now, what was that bag that you wanted that was so much money? <laughs> Honestly, it really wasn't. It was about $70. To and West Indian parents, that's a lot of money. No, <laughs> it was about seventy dollars, and honestly, I was working at this restaurant, so seventy dollars was a lot of money. It is so a that's lot of why money. she was like, "Okay, you're gonna make your own handbag. What about that?" So you started sewing. You've always had a love for sewing, I did. Um, and your family all encouraged that as well. From that love of doing that, when did you decide that you wanted to actually make this into a career? Well because I saw a lot of people wanting when I was walking down the street where did you get that handbag from so there was an interest and when I actually told people that hey I make this there was even more of an interest because at that time there were not a lot of entrepreneurs especially handbag designers mm -hmm. so that's when I said hmm I think I have something there and my friends started commissioning me to make handbags that match their al outfits so that's when I actually went and I registered and I came up with the name Sevi, which is my father's name backwards, which is Eve. Oh, okay. That's he a actually nice taught touch. me a lot. He taught me a lot, um, mostly all my skills, my basic skills of sewing. So, and also in the Haitian um, language, Creole, Sevi means to serve. So, I wanted to have my parents', my father's name, and also for it to have more of a meaning than just a name. I actually thought it was your nickname. Thank you. For Severe? No. They call you Sevi. A lot of people like, call me Sevi, but it's really, a lot of people think Sevi is my nickname for Severe, but it's not at all. It's not. It's a little twist. A little twist of the name, using the family in there. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely Thank very, you. very unique. Um, tell us about growing up in Haiti. 
and the fashion sense because truth be told it's not you don't really think of haiti first when it comes to fashion um you really don't think of much caribbean islands on you, the fashion you really scale. don't but one thing that i can say is there are a lot of talent in haiti most women that's the way that they get by is to sew tailoring mostly tailoring but my grandfather my mother's side he was a milliner he did hats for a living so i think that talent came from really my ancestors my grandmothers my great-grandparents so in haiti there were a lot of people even in the community that's where my, my parents used to get our dresses made in the community or used to get them sent here you know for purchase but most of our dresses were made in haiti so we used to have to go and get our dresses tailored you know, for um, events or Christmas. And my mom used to wear this beautiful red dress that I adored. Mm -hmm. So I used to admire watching her getting dressed and um, going out with my dad or taking us on a Sunday walk after church. So I would say my mom and um, where we actually were located, the villagers, so. That's really interesting. And which part of Haiti was that? We lived in Bonfin, which is in the country in the mountains. But we we used to go to Okai, which is I believe the third city. Okay. Um, where we used to go to school, so that was like the city. But during the weekends, we would go back to the mountains, or during the holidays. That's pretty interesting. I'm a country girl, With a mountain girl. <laughs> the country and the mountain. Would you say there's a different fashion sense in terms of people from the town, from Port-au-Prince, um, in terms of what, how they would dress and how they would wear versus someone from the country? Definitely, definitely. I think the country is more subtle. They just, they're more easygoing. Okay. In Port-au-Prince, you will see women with their suits and men in business attires or their dress, dressy pants. But the country, I don't think they, these people really cared much about fashion in a sense where they really go beyond as far as getting something to wear. They would just deal with what they have and make the best of it and most of them actually did their own pieces like some of them used to make their own bras their own lingeries which is really nice i would say it, it's <laughs> definitely a nice touch and then fast forward you're in america you're in new york you're in brooklyn so many different fashion senses come in here now so how does that all come into play from your, you had a good base coming from haiti seeing that foundation i think one thing about me is i love people watching People watching will really give you an idea of what people love and what they like to see. Um, so I started people watching. That was a hobby in, um, when I was in college. But I love how Brooklyn Knights dress. They, there's something different. You can tell a girl that is from Brooklyn. From There's a little more pizzazz in the way that she walks and even the way that she does her hair. You know, um, also Manhattan. Manhattan Knights, I don't know if that's a real term for <laughs> people that live in Manhattan. They, they dress differently, especially Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like funky, and I really dug, dig that style. Oh my gosh, I said dug. I really <laughs> dig that style. Of um, I used to wear the high platform and the combat boots. Oh my gosh. You look like it was terrible. You look like no, you would was, do that. It was not good <laughs> looking at it but now. Looking back, it was all part of your fashion sense, yeah, which is it great. Was. It was. But hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. If you're interested in more handbags, definitely tune in because we have a great episode coming up for you right now. There's more coming up right after this. Stay with us. My name is Stephanie Miles, and I am Miss Caribbean United States 2013, and you're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel here with Severe Eras. Severe, amazing set of bags here. Now, I promise you guys are going to have some treats. Right in front of you are all handmade pieces. And I want to emphasize that because these beautiful bags are all made by hand from start to finish. So. 
let's give them a little tutorial how this all happens. You have to design it, you have to get the pattern, you have to create it. Let's give them a whole spectrum before they get to this part, which is the final product. Well, when I first started, I <coughs> learned uh, from a lot of mistakes. Before, I used to just buy the leather and cut right into it, which was, I, I lost a lot of money. So um, I learned that there's a pattern that you have to actually do. So now, before I even go into the design, I make the pattern to see, I play with it and see how the pattern could come out, if everything aligned properly, and then I go ahead and cut the leather. I cut into the fabric first. I make a faux bag, well, not faux, but I make it out of fabric first to see how it is, if everything's okay. And then, maybe a, about two to three trial, I go ahead and make the actual sample. And that's for every single bag you do this? Every first handbag that I okay. do. Every first design that I do. I play with it first because if the proportions are not right and I cut into the actual leather, that's money wasting because mm -hmm. that leather will not, that bag will not be able to be sold. So um, that's, and once I actually develop that handbag, once I get an order, I cut, I baste, and then I sew. Yes, so we have a system, we call it cutting, basting, and sewing. Yes. So why don't you tell us exactly, of course, cutting, we know what cutting is. Mm -hmm. Let's let's get to this, basting. The only <laughs> thing I know about basting is a turkey. Yeah, I know. So, how do you so, baste a handbag? So after I cut all the leather, all the lining, um, and I have all my zippers in place, what I do is I adhesive, I use adhesive, and I put all of the pieces together before I actually sew it. Why is this? Only because to ensure that all my lines will be consistent. Like hmm. my lines from the left to the right and from the left to the right of the other side of the bag so that they they all line up. There's no slippage. Since I actually do everything by hand on machine, I use my sewing machine to sew them by the way. But if there's a little slippage or if my hands move wrong and I tug at it for a moment, it won't be even. So I want everything to be consistent, so I go ahead and baste everything first. And wow. after everything is based, then I go ahead and sew. So that's an extra step that not all hand designers, handbag designers do. Um, a lot of people just go in to cut and sew. Yes. Which is standard. Mm -hmm. You do that extra step in between. I do. I do. I take, I take a lot of pride in Savvy Bag, and um, my prices, no, not even my prices, but the workmanship that I put into it. Um, some people would actually take one of my handbags and say, no, you didn't make this. This is probably made by machine or you commissioned someone to make them. I make them. So I really take a lot of pride in that. And the basting, the basting, excuse me, just give me that extra confidence knowing that this bag is going to come out as perfect as I would like it to. That's amazing. So let's talk about the three pieces that you have here right now. So be on Focus TV. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of these bags at the end of the program, they all have names. We'll be able to let Severe tell you how to get one of those for the holidays, for whatever you want. It's going to be great. Um, this one right here is actually one of my favorites. Um, I adore this bag. So what's the name of this one? This one is called the Denden. Den. Okay. And why that name? The whole collection, my summer collection, is called JT. The JT is spelled as if is summer, but it's pronounced as when I was. Like con is when I was. Con JT when I was. But the way that it's spelled is when in summer. That was the summer collection. And that the whole summer collection just is a playful reminder of my childhood. Like this bag, I have a picture of when I was little and I had this little straw bag. Mm -hmm. I was by my foot. My mom took a picture of me. And this bag is called a Jakut in Haiti. It's somewhat of a straw bag and it has a little cap on top of it. So this bag just, just inspired reminded me, by that. Yeah, reminded me of that and it inspired me to actually create this whole bag. Now, this bag does not.